All on Cooper CPAs, located in the heart of East Nashville, offer a wide variety of tax services for individuals and businesses. Contact them at 615-257-0646 and visit their website, allcooper.com, for a full list of services. Coming up next on Political Soup, you won't believe it, a bipartisan vote in the Senate. Not exactly what everybody expected. It's over guns. We'll talk about that. Obamacare, the money keeps rolling and somebody says it's a train wreck and it's not who you think it is. And we'll close out today talking about money in Nashville and what happens when a liberal has to take their own medicine. All that and more coming up next on Political Soup. Bandwidth for today's show is brought to you by SoftLayer.com. We love SoftLayer here at Talkopolis. They are the greatest hosting company ever. They make everything easy. Check out their website at SoftLayer.com. Thanks again for sponsoring the show. Talkopolis, the social media TV network for your city. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Political Soup. I'm Joe Williams with the one and only Crom Carmichael, the man who is... Uh, is an aggregate of all things newsworthy. You know, Joe, this the last week, <laughs> the world is going crazy. It, it has it just, been an ugly it week. just the world's going crazy. Things just things are just it's amazing. Is has there ever been a point I can think of maybe two points in the past where I just kind of went, You've got to be kidding me. And this this week has joined in with that. Yeah, it it, it is. And it's I mean this vote in the Senate, uh, they're making it out to be such a big, big deal. And there's not a thinking person, not a thinking person who thinks that had that bill passed, it would have reduced gun violence. Let's talk a minute about, about the vote <laughs> and the bill that we're talking about. This was the, uh, the, the bill that would have required um, background checks. And I think every, uh, it's amazing. The, the polls say, Crom, that 92% of Americans agree with background checks. And there's a piece of me that agrees with background checks at gun shows and some of these other places where they're not happening. Uh, my concern, and, and we talked about this off the air when we first got here, and I said, Crom, I, I don't see a problem with the way it's been presented, but what else, what else is in that bill? Somebody's looked at this deeper than I have. Now, let's just be clear about this. It is impossible. I don't care what Obama says or the liberals or anything else. It is impossible for the federal government to conduct federal background checks and not have a gun registry available with a little programming. It's just simply technically not possible. And so what the liberals really, you have to ask yourself, okay, if background checks wouldn't have stopped Newtown, if background checks wouldn't have stopped uh, that killer for uh, the person who killed those people and shot Gabby Gifford, if background checks wouldn't have stopped the, the, the Virginia Tech Student or the or the or the shot uh, the uh, movie theater right. killer, if it wouldn't have stopped any of those people, then what are the liberals so exercised about? And the answer is this, and we touched on it in in the last program or the one before that. Gun rights, the right to bear arms, is a primary right. It is right up there with property rights, the right to speech, the right to the press and the right to freedom of religion. Those are all primary rights. And if one goes, they all eventually go. And liberals hate the idea of people being able to work hard and keep their own property as a right. They hate that. And in fact, Obama in the last week has said, you know, once somebody saved a certain amount of money in their IRA or their 401k, they shouldn't get to save anymore. Well, I'm sorry. What right does the government have to tell somebody how hard, how much money they can have if they work hard and honestly accumulate it? How can they do that? <clears throat> and the answer is they, they can't do it justly. So what are they really after? They really want to have a gun registry so that at some point in the future, when the time is right, they can go collect all the guns. Now, I say that. And what's very fascinating to me in this whole thing is that a lot of the Jewish leaders, Bloomberg, Feinstein, Jewish people throughout history have been some of the most oppressed people ever. <clears throat> in, in, and even today, in the Middle East, Jews are regularly targeted and killed. Hitler targeted and killed them. All right. uh, th throughout history, Jews have been attacked. Now... Why would Jewish leaders not recognize that in the cases I just mentioned, 
Those were governments that attacked the Jewish people, not some individual or not some Ku Klux Klaner, which, which does too. happen, yeah. which happened too. And by the way, should a Jewish person have the right to keep and bear arms to protect themselves against some Ku Klux Klaner? The answer is yes. But should, should Jewish people and non-Jewish people have the right to keep and bear arms against a tyrannical government? The answer is yes. Liberals poo-poo that. Look, what happened, look what's happening in Venezuela right now. You got this guy who just won the election. He's Chavez's his handpicked successor. Right. He is now sending in his military and troops and thugs into the villages that supported his opponent and killing people. That's what he's doing. Do those, can be, those people fight back? No, they don't have arms. And when we rebelled against the British, we were successful in doing so only because the citizenry had arms. And so this really is a battle over not just, not just the right to bear arms. This is a much bigger battle over property rights and everything else. And, um, and it's fascinating to watch how angry these people get. Now, then if you switch gears, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, you, you understand that, that some of the folks who watch this are going to take you as... As as a, a strong advocate of of uh, violence and just off off just so far right and off the wall that that, that you're dangerous. No, your the, thoughts are dangerous. Cr criminals criminals break the law. Insane people break the law. They don't care about the law. What the liberals are after is the law-abiding citizens. By definition, law-abiding citizens are not criminals. True. By definition, criminals are not law-abiding citizens. So you're saying they're looking, looking to pick at low-hanging fruit. They want to go after, eventually they want to be able to collect everybody's guns and say nobody has the right to have a gun. But then, then who will have the guns? The government. There will always be people who are armed. Always. True. And the people who are armed eventually become oppressors. That's just, it's, that's just a historical fact. Interesting part of this vote, I thought, was that uh, it was a bipartisan situation. There were Democrats who, who broke and voted no. Yes. Uh, now, that's, that's correct. Hi history will show even um, Senator Harry Reid voted no. Well, no, I'm not sure he did. There's, I was going to say, there's a catch to it. He voted no so that he could bring it back up later as a parliamentary procedure issue. But history will show if you just, if all you want to see is who voted yes and who voted no, and I don't think he gets to put an asterisk in Well, there. Harry Reid, Harry Reid, when he uh, won re-election, he was endorsed by the NRA because he said he was a big supporter of the Second Amendment. Now we know that he was dishonest when he said that. We simply know that. We know that in 2008, when Obama was running, he gave a speech in which he said, I will not take your guns, your rifles. He listed all these things he won't take. Now he wants to take them. In fact, he's on the record that he supports Feinstein's bill, which does actually take these things away from people. It takes their, it takes their a military style weapon, which doesn't mean, it just means it looks like yeah. a military weapon. It doesn't operate like a military then, weapon. Then we get back to that great debate of what, you know, what is a, what is a, a terrible term? And it's a terrible term, assault weapon. Right. Every weapon is an assault weapon. Uh, I, or can be. Well, I was going to say, I've got a baseball bat yeah. that I can assault you with. Sure. It can be an assault weapon. Uh, but then we, that's when we start getting back to, you know, devil's in the details. What exactly is military type? Semi-automatic? So, you know, my grandfather's 22 that holds 15 shells and goes... Oh, that and, would definitely be. Uh, you that ain't would, getting that. No, I'm, no that would, I'm saying that would oh, be... I know. But I mean, that, would, that would fall under her yeah. definition. And that's, well... But, a pistol. A pistol that all you have to do is pull the trigger and not cock it? Yeah. That would fall under her definition. Single action revolver. So, uh, I don't know. I, well, yeah. You, yeah. You're now using terms yeah, that I... Yeah. Just, yeah. Every well, time you don't have to cock semi -automatic. it. Well, I was going to say, they're a revol most folks think that's a semi-automatic... But a, but a single action revolver is the same thing. There, there are plenty now, not that I have one, uh, but there are hammerless uh, pistols, lightweights, airweights, that just, that's all you gotta do and, the, and the, the revolve turns and barrel but, turns and bang. But what liberals try to make you believe is that an assault weapon is a machine gun. And a machine gun is a, is a weapon that you pull your trigger down and hold the trigger down and bullets keep flying out. Yeah, as long as you've got that's them in the, the magazine. Yeah. As, long as, as long as you've got them in the magazine, they're gonna keep, the, and, uh, but, but, but what Feinstein wants you to believe is that a, if you have a gun and every time you pull the trigger one bullet comes out but you don't have to cock it, she wants you to believe that that's the same thing as a machine gun because she will not talk specifics because she knows she will lose her argument. But once again, once again, let's, let's review what the Second Amendment says because it's very important. It's, the Second Amendment reads, it says, 
a, a well-regulated militia being necessary for a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. So it doesn't talk about protecting yourself against a criminal. It talks about it's necessary to have a well-regulated militia in order to have a free state. So this is about freedom. It's a much bigger issue. And liberals want to take away your freedom, and that's free, all kinds of freedoms, but the biggest one they want, ultimately, is their, your property. Let's shift gears just a little bit uh, because guns would have helped no one uh, earlier this week at the Boston Marathon when uh, two bombs were exploded. Uh, one right at the finish line and, and one just past, uh, just beyond there, and I think they found uh, at least one other device that they've admitted that they found. Uh, Crom, uh, another act of terrorism uh, in this country uh, against uh, innocent, innocent victims. Sure. Uh, you know, it, it's one thing when you attack them going to work. Okay, I, as, as crazy as those guys were, uh, maybe if I'm in their shoes I can see yeah. part, of, part of their reasoning. Uh, if you hate capitalism in America that much, yes, the towers were a symbol. But the Boston Marathon, what, what is it a symbol of? That's, that's purely hate and, and, and murder. Well, we don't, know, we don't know who did it yet, so we don't know what the motives are. You have people like Timothy McVeigh, who was uh, kind of a, a, a lone nut with one accomplice. Yeah. And, um, but I don't think he was insane. I think, uh, he, I think, yeah. I think he, what he did was he did it on purpose. All of his, uh, what he did was, was, was absolutely terrible, completely indefensible. Um, but he, he was not insane. Uh, a, a, uh, some of these Islamists who have perpetrated violent acts are not insane. No. And so, and, and so you, have to, you, you will have to wait and find out. But what's been interesting to me about the Boston Marathon is how the left has reacted. You had one guy who's a white fellow writing for Salon. Tim uh, Wise. Yes. Tim uh, Wise. Well, I don't know. David, somebody rather. But anyway, okay. could have been two guys. Well, I'm saying he, he could was. Could have been two white guys. He was anyway. quoting Tim Wise. Tim okay. Wise is the article that I read, and it was okay. A well, quote that, where they're saying, where they're saying, they hope that the perpetrator turns out to be a white guy. male. Yeah. Um, and, and and it just the, and then you have Barney Frank who is claiming that the uh, that the heroism and and by the way the police um, reacted quickly but there were a lot of volunteers there were a lot of people there mm -hmm. who had nothing to do with government who who acted quickly and who did wonderful things and you could call them heroes because uh, some of them took great risks because you didn't know if another bomb was going off right um, and so you had all that but you had Barney Frank actually saying that this is this is uh, proof. The, essentially, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit, but he says that a great big government is a good thing. And so it, it's, it's just a sad thing when you see people either from either side, but I haven't seen people from the right. Um, I've not seen them claim, well, this is just an example of why Obama shouldn't be out taking all those vacations and doing all those fundraisers. He ought to be paying attention to Homeland Security. And this never would have happened if he'd been doing that. Now, now that is really stupid yeah. to say that, but so I'm, I'm giving that an example of what would be really stupid to say yes. from somebody on the right. Yes. But the people on the left are saying things that are equally stupid, but they're serious. Yeah, but the scary part is it's, it's left, it's right. Well, this There's is nothing not, left in the middle. Well, well this also isn't a left-right issue. No, it's, 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 it's the other half. <laughs> it's, well, it's just a, it's, a, it's a person who committed a terrible act. When we find out who that person is, we'll know whether or not it was a maniac, an insane person, or somebody who's associated with perhaps Al-Qaeda. Uh, I don't know of any domestic terrorist groups, quite frankly, that have committed mm -hmm. acts of terror that are, that are part of an organized group. You know, one thing I did think uh, that struck me as interesting in that was you talk about the deterrent effect of some things in the past. Uh, within an hour or two hours of, uh, of the bombings, uh, the Al-Qaeda group in Pakistan quickly said, we didn't have anything to do with this. Okay. They were quick to say, no, 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 we, we did Well, that's why I say we don't know who did it yet. Yeah. We have no idea, yeah. and we need to wait until we find out. When we find them, and if, they're, if it's proven that it's them, yeah, I'm going to tell you, I've, it, it's time for the proponents of the death penalty to step back up. You, you know, you, you stop things by never letting them happen again. Well, you know, that's an interesting point. I don't know what the law is in Massachusetts, and I don't know whether or not federal law in this instance, if there is a federal, the FBI took over the investigation right. immediately. Uh, so I don't know whether or not this is under a federal law jurisdiction or whether it's the Massachusetts jurisdiction. And so I don't know whether or not the death penalty 
is part of the law in Massachusetts, whether or not that's an option. I think part of it will have to be once they figure, once they find the suspect and make them the criminal, uh, part of the proof will have to be that it crossed state lines at some point at which it becomes a federal okay. issue. Well, we'll see. And that makes it easier. Yeah. One last thing to tell you uh, in this segment, uh, if you get an opportunity, you might want to Google or, or go online. Uh, last night, uh, the Boston Bruins, the first, uh, the first How cool professional uh, game event since this, uh, this terrible event. Uh, they brought the gentleman out to sing the national anthem, and after the first four or five bars, the crowd took over. Uh, if you see this and hear those Bostonians, uh, I got to tell you, uh, if you're not moved by that, then you saw that. Yeah, I, yes. I wish I wish we'd have pulled it down because it was absolutely awesome. And hats off to uh, to Boston's biggest rivals, the New York Yankees, who uh, threw uh, threw a bit of love to them the other night by playing Sweet Caroline. As <laughs> that's the Boston side. It's a sports <laughs> thing, I grant you, but uh, I thought Charles, that nice gesture. Yeah, you bet. it was it you was bet. a way way to do things right. All yeah. right, we're going to take our first break. When we come back. We're going to talk about affordable health care. Yes, it's known by another name. <laughs> it's not affordable either. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that. Crom has some opinions. Coming up next on Political Soup. <laughs> 